In this video, we will learn the theorem continuity of integration. What is that? Continuity of integration. You can see the statement here. Okay. Uh, let's follow my notes. Okay. This is continuity of integration is the named theorem. So, we have to be get ready with the statement also. So, in the question paper, they will ask you state and prove continuity of integration. At that time, you have to write the statement. No. So, at the time of learning, we you have to be ready to write the statement also in the examination paper. So, here you can see the statement in my notes. These I wrote it in the form of hints, main things only. So, you look at this. First, what you are doing, you are taking a function f that is integrable over e. Let f be integrable over e. First one, first part, you are having two parts in this theorem. First one is if e n n equal to 1 to e infinite, you are having a collection, no? And then you are telling about the collection. If this is a, is an, okay, an, an. Yeah, if this is an countable collection of measurable subsets of e, then this condition will be there. What is that? F should be integrable over E. And the first part is what? If E n, n equal to 1 to infinite F is, a, is an ascending countable collection of measurable sets. You will get confused. So, countable, no? Countable. Countable collection of measurable subsets of E. These are what? These are the subsets of E. E means what? E means a measurable set. Then this condition will be there. This is what you have to prove in the first part and in the second part what you have to do you are taking descending countable collection of measurable sets. In the first part you are taking ascending countable collection of measurable sets. In the second part you are taking descending countable collection of measurable sets. So if this is a descending countable collection of measurable subsets of E then this condition will be there. You have to prove this in the second part. So let's start proving the first part. Let you are taking like this f1 equal to e1, f2 equal to e2 minus e1, f3 equal to e3 minus e2, etc. fn equal to fn minus sorry, fn equal to en minus en minus 1. So, here look at this the difference you have to keep this in your mind, otherwise, you will be confused. f1 means e1, f2 means first you have to write e2 difference e1. Okay, F3 means E3 minus E2. 3, 3, 2, 2. Okay, 1, 1. Fn means En difference En minus 1. Then you, you are taking union to these. Union. Union of F1, F2, F3 till Fn. And then you will find the union of uh, E1, E2, E3. The both will be equal. You will get an answer to this. And also you will get an answer to this. Both will be equal. If you, are, if you define like this. So that is what you are writing and fn's will be disjoint. This value you, are, you will get by subtracting like this. You will get some values for f, f1, f2, f3, fn. No? That values will be disjoint. fn's will be disjoint. There will not be common values present here. This for f2. You are subtracting e2 from, sorry, e1 from e2. Okay. So that you are subtracting e1 and you are getting e2 f3 you are subtracting e2 and you are getting e3 that is at the at, at, after doing all these things you will get f1 f2 f3 till fn and you cannot see any common values in f1 f2 f3 till fn so if there is no common values that will be disjoined you know so that is what you are writing here now we have we have already are having this result where you are having this result we have previous theorem let's see the previous theorem look at this the previous theorem is this countable additivity of integration section 4.5 okay in this theorem you can see um, You are having the what is what you are having that theorem you are having integral f over e is equal to this no. So 
so you are writing here we have here uh, you are writing this in this format okay so when you write like that you will get this integral f here you are putting union fn okay because look at this union en is e e1 e2 union of e1 e2 etc en are what is what is that union of e1 e2 e3 etc en hmm? that is e no so union en means what e you have taken that union en is equal to union fn so instead of writing e you can write this also no so that is what they are writing like that union fn then summation i is equal to 1 to infinity summation i is equal to 1 to infinity integral f integral f here ei here fi because union uh, fn equal to union en from that line you can write like this you can write this like this using this okay okay let's proceed now what you are doing is you are making a small bit of adjustment you are writing this like this that is summation i is equal to 1 to n n tends to infinite like that the same thing you are writing but like this integral right copy it then limit n tends to infinite summation no so you are putting plus and right split it okay put i equal to 1 put i equal to 2 put i equal to till n okay summation so in between you are putting plus so you will get this after that limit n tends to in the place of f1 you are putting the value of f1 in the, here you have have that f1 equal to e1 f2 equal to this right so you are substituting that by these values there so that you will get this and now limit n tends to infinity write this here you are splitting integral e2 minus integral e1 like that you are splitting this okay similarly you will split this etc okay now after that all the terms will be cancelled except what this term so that you will get this in the next step and from this that's it left hand side in the union fn you can put union en no so this is what in the statement they are asking us to prove you proved it right okay now let us move on to proving the second part second part is very very simple look at this only this much okay first you are defining let dk equal to e1 minus you have to keep all these things in your mind okay these are the task if you have all these things in your mind if you can recall all these things then um, that is what they are testing okay in the examination this skill this is what the skill they are expecting from us okay so keep all this in mind if you want to keep all this in your mind you have to revise again and again then you could not you you will not feel the difficulties if you are studying just one day before the examination means then you feel very difficult and you could not keep all these things in your mind at the time of writing examination surely you will get you will forget okay but if you are repeating uh, every day you are studying and you are revising it again and again means at the time of examination you don't get uh, panic or you feel relaxed to write the answers the examination paper okay so here you have to define this first dk equal to e1 difference ek k equal to 1 2 etc now ek is descending in the statement they are given you the second part ek is descending no this e, e and the subsets is descending no subset of e is descending no this collection is descending no so that is what here you are writing ek k equal to 1 to infinity is descending if this is descending means you find d1 d2 d3 d4 d5 d infinity that value will be increasing okay when you find a d1 you will get a value e1 minus e1 you will get zero e1 minus e1 you get zero when you find similar you you find d2 d3 like that you get so many values that values will be keep on increasing you are first getting zero then you will get one the value that is greater than zero and then you will get a value that is greater than the previous uh, d2 can you get that the value dk value will be keep on increasing so that is what you are writing if this is descending means this will be increasing now yeah this this collection is increasing no so you can use the part one increasing means 
if a collection is in, uh, ascending or increasing both are same ascending means you can use this result you know so that is what you proved in the first part so you are using that part using that result here because here is also you are having a collection that collection is what ascending or increasing whatever so you can use the part one so i am using part one using part one you are writing this okay in the place of dk you are substituting the value and now this can be written like this using d morgan's identity that is you first write e1 difference then union is going you are bringing this union to this side this term when you do that union becomes intersection that is what d morgan's identity so you are doing that write this side as it is the previous line now what they are doing you are splitting you are having two terms here no sorry you are having two terms here now so you are splitting in the next line look at this integral e1f minus integral this value okay is equal to limit k tends to infinitive uh, here also you are having two terms e1 and e2 you are split e, sorry e1 and ek you are splitting that so you will get this okay okay this is the next page this is on another paper okay you are getting this okay now what you are doing you are giving multiplying this in the next step k tends to infinitive have you any other worked with this term because you are not having k here no so you are not putting limit k to tends to infinitive to this and you are giving this uh, but here you will put because you are having k no you are just multiplying but this k limit k tends to infinitive have any other work with this because you are not having any k here so multiply this and you are writing here you are having uh, k no so this this is necessary for this term so you are writing that can you follow me so this and this will be follow yes. oh my god this and this will be cancel and this and this will be cancel so remaining you will get so this is what they are asking us to prove no so you proved it here you are having k k in the in our proof in our question in our statement we are having n so replace k with n k by n so write uh, in the place of k substitute n so you are getting this is what you, you have to prove now so hence the theorem